Let's get into the music festival do's and don'ts. This is a terrifying filter. So my first do is to make a schedule. You can either print out a physical schedule and circle the bands that you want to see, or you can download the app. I know Lollapalooza has an app. A lot of festivals have apps now. It's actually really cool. Um, so you're able to plan out, here are the bands that I want to see. Here's when they are. Here's the stages that they're at. Doing this like small amount of homework will make your experience so much better. From going to a lot of festivals, um, I've noticed that a lot of people either download or screenshot the lineup for each day and make it like the background on their phone, which is super smart because then you don't have to use a lot of battery or a lot of data, like opening the app, and it's just kind of there. You can like click it and you're like, oh, that's where I'm going next. My next do, establish your squad and communicate clearly with that squad. You need to manage everyone's expectations going in if you're going with a big group. I always say that the primo, primo number of people to go to a music festival with is three because anything larger than that, it just gets crazy. But what I mean by this is that not everyone's going to want to see the same bands. Some people are going to want to see bands that other people don't want to see. So you need to figure out, like, here's the bands that we're sticking together for. Here's where we're splitting up. If we are splitting up, here's, like, a clear landmark on the festival grounds that we're going to meet up if we don't have cell service, because cell service isn't always perfect at these things. Um, and just kind of in general, be like, here's the experience that I want to have, and here's the experience you want to have. So if you're going to Lala and you know who you're going with, I would start a group text with them today, six days out, and be like, hey guys, here's the bands that I want to see. What are some bands that you want to see? Also, is there anyone else that we should invite to Lala? We should tell them that it's not too late to get tickets. My next tip is to stay hydrated. Drink so much water. More water than you think you need to drink. What's going to happen is that you're going to get there and you're going to be with your friends and you're going to be like, I don't feel like waiting in line for the bathroom so I'm not going to drink a lot of water and I don't want to spend money on water bottles and I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. But it's too bad because you're going to pass out if you don't drink enough water and going to the bathroom is fun. You meet nice girls there and they compliment you on your hair. Not all festivals will allow you to bring like reusable water bottles in. I just checked the Lollapalooza website on their like prohibited items list and it says you can bring empty hydration packs and water bottles, plastic or aluminum, max size 36 ounces. My next do is to make sure that you're prepared for all types of weather. You're going to be carrying everything on your back. You need like a good backpack. Here, this is this is my festival backpack. I also use it as my gym bag, which is why it's sitting on the floor readily available for this Snapchat. For Lollapalooza specifically, you can't bring in umbrellas, but I also don't think you would want to walk around a music festival with an umbrella when it wasn't raining. That sounds really annoying. So hats are good. Ponchos are good. Um, any kind of jacket that like repels water is good, just so that you're prepared uh, in case it happens to rain. A couple years ago... Uh, at Governor's Ball, there was like a monsoon and I got stuck in it. Let's find that photo. My next do is related, wear sensible shoes. Like, I know that you want to look hot. I know you have like your festival outfit together, but there are so many cute sneakers in the world. I love wearing sneakers. Wear sneakers. FYF was a pretty small festival and I still walked like 17 miles in three days. Like, you were on your feet so much. You need to be wearing comfortable shoes. Ellie and I fight about this every festival and then I convinced her to wear sneakers one day at Coachella and she was like, huh, this is great. These vans I'm retiring after they've served me at several festivals because they're just totally shot, but this is an example of a shoe you could wear at a festival. Closet's dirty. I'm sorry. Converses are good. I wore these at Bonnery for three days straight. That is a good tip though. Don't wear the same shoes all three or four days of the festival because you will get blisters. These are great because they have ankle support. Um, I haven't worn these to a lot of festivals just because I hate having to clean them, but anything with a high top like this and a thick sole. These me and Jenna and Ellie bought specifically for GovBall last year and they light up. I don't think they're charged right now, um, but they are unfortunately the least comfortable shoes I've ever worn in my entire life. So wear comfortable shoes. That being said, don't wear new shoes. So if you're seeing this and you're like, oh my God, I need sneakers, buy them today, wear them all weekend. Like you need to break them in. You don't want to be breaking in shoes at a festival. My final do is to bring an external battery or portable charger. This one I got, oh, it's charged. I got this off of Amazon. I want to say it was like $24 and I can charge my phone completely three times with this, which is perfect for a festival. Granted, like, because I work in social media and because I'm normally working at festivals, I use my phone a lot more than a normal person would, but it's still so nice to have and so nice to not have to, like, sit down by a charging station and, like, be uncomfortably propped up and, like, missing shows because you need to have your phone charged. My first don't is don't bring anything super valuable that you'd be like devastated if it got lost. Like obviously you're going to have your phone, you're going to have your wallet. I wouldn't recommend bringing your entire purse. Like if you have a backpack or if you have a fanny pack, like just put like cards that you need, cash that you need, you need an ID, like that kind of stuff. Um, but try and have the things that you're taking in with you be to the bare minimum. My next don't may sound a little bit preachy and it may sound like I'm trying to be like your cool Aunt Frankie, but I am. And it's don't drink too much. You're going to be, like I said before, outside 
in the heat on your feet um probably a little dehydrated even though you should be drinking water because i already told you to drink water um but it's just not a good idea to be clear if you're not 21 uh i am not condoning you drinking at all um but for everyone in general i know people like to pre-game festivals i am like kind of wishy-washy on that like i said i typically go to festivals for work so i don't really do a lot of pre-gaming because i have things to do and i just don't in general like drinking in the heat during the day and then having to go do a lot of activities so if you are choosing to pregame i would say drink like a quarter of what you would at a normal pregame because you need like energy and stamina and like if you crash later because you're like starting to feel that hangover it's not going to be good and then when it comes to drinking when you're at the festival itself drinks are not the cheapest at any festival this is nothing to do with Lollapalooza so like there's better things you'd be spending your money on um but also you just don't want to be like so hammered that you like have to go home earlier that you you know miss a set that you really want to see like you, this is an experience you want to remember <laughs> next don't don't put too much pressure on yourself to have like the perfect festival experience something that was really liberating for me was realizing that like there's no right way to do a festival and what i mean by that you don't have to go to every single headliner just because they're the headliner you don't have to like stay with your pack of friends if you want to go do your own thing you don't have to like spend a million dollars on booze like i said you don't have to like you can take breaks, you can sit down, you can just like chill and have a conversation. Like you don't need to be like raging for four days straight because you don't have the stamina for it. And like, who are you turning up for? Is it Snapchat? And my final don't is going to sound so hypocritical. It's not even funny, but it is. Don't spend the entire time on your phone. I get that this is laughable coming from me because essentially for a living, I go to music festivals and I document them on my phone. But I was talking about this the other day. Since I started writing festival recaps in addition to like covering festivals on social, I feel a lot more liberated to like put my phone away and enjoy it and experience it so that I have something to write about other than just like constantly being on my phone, making sure my phone's charged, taking a video of every set, taking photos of every set, getting pictures in front of this, getting pictures in front of that. Like you should definitely you should definitely like document it and like these are memories that you want to have and like you know there's going to be art installations and like have your friends like take pictures of you take pictures with your friends get strangers to take pictures of you and your friends together but then like when you're at the shows be at the shows or when you're hanging out with your friends just like hang out with your friends and you're going to save your battery you're not going to have any data anyway so you're literally going to be like waiting for something to go through and whatever and like this is the perfect opportunity for you to just unplug a little bit and that's what i have to say about that so there you go, there you have it. Those are my music festival do's and don'ts. This was a very long Snapchat story. Shout out to you for watching this. Shout out to you for finishing it. And if this list has totally convinced you to come to Lollapalooza, which I'm sure it has, uh, you can still get tickets through the Ticketmaster official ticket exchange. This is the URL.